Hello and welcome to the introduction of the Universal Variability Language and Feature IDE. First of all, what is the Universal Variability Language? UVL is a language for feature models. It was developed as a joint effort within the Modava initiative. Let's take a look at an example. In this example, we can see a feature diagram representing a server. Up to now, the source code of the feature model was written in an XML file. As we can see, it was not really readable and quite large even for such a small feature model. Now we take the example of the same server model in UVL. Looking at the source in UVL, we can see that it is both more readable and also smaller than in XML. Here the features of the feature model are ordered in a tree hierarchy. We have three parts. First, the namespace, which allows to reference the model. Second, the features. And third, the cross-tree constraints. The children of a feature are grouped by properties, as we already know from Feature IDE. These can be flags, like being mandatory or optional, and groups, like OR and alternative, as we can see in this example. To create a new feature model, we right-click on a project, create a new feature model, and save it in UVL format. We can also transform an existing feature model from XML to UVL. To do so, we right-click on an existing project, click Export Feature Model and save it as a UVL file. We can now edit the feature model in the UVL source code by, for example, adding a new feature or a new constraint. We can see that the changes are adapted immediately in the Feature Diagram Editor. Another aspect of UVL is the support of attributes, where we can add string, boolean, double and long attributes to a feature in Feature IDE. This can be done either manually or with the attributes view that is already integrated and known in Feature IDE. For the creation of an extended UVL file, we have three options. We can create a new file in extended UVL format. Export an existing model to extended UVL. or simply add the attribute extended to the root feature of a model that already exists in UVL. Attributes are denoted by curly braces behind the feature and we use commas to separate multiple attributes. We make a distinction between attributes that only have a value and attributes that have no value or have a unit, are recursive or are configurable. For attributes with only a value, we can simply declare the name of the attribute and its value. When having more information, we declare the name of the attribute and write the other details in curly braces behind the name. When using the attributes view, one can simply add a new attribute and edit it in the view as already known. As we can see when switching back to the source tab, UVL only saves the values that the user has entered. In case that no value is given, the only thing that has to be saved is the type of the attribute. Together with UVL, a decomposition and composition technique for feature models was introduced for Feature IDE. Trying to edit a large feature model like this eShop example can be really inconvenient. For this reason, the decomposition technique can split the feature model into several subtrees, then can be edited separately. 
Here we can see the eShop example consisting of several submodels. We can identify the decomposed subtrees by a blue rectangle around their features. To import an existing model as a submodel, we again have two options. The first is to manually add them in the source code. Here we have to specify which models to import via their name declared in the namespace. We can also declare an alias by which we can refer to the specific model in the UVAL file. Afterwards, the model can be included under a feature in the feature model by its alias and the name of the root feature. As we can see, no other feature of the submodel needs to be referenced to be included. This helps to shorten the file even more. The second way to add a submodel is via the feature diagram editor. Here we can import a model via the feature IDE outline by its relative path and optionally add an alias. Afterwards, we can open the context menu for a feature below, which we want to add to the submodel. With the option Add Imported Feature, we can select one or more root features of imported models in the opened dialog. Adding a submodel below a feature is only allowed for features that are not themselves contained in a reference submodel, since editing of imported features is not allowed in the composed model. As we can see in the context menu, the only option for editing an imported model is deleting the submodel at its root feature. To edit an imported submodel, we have to open it in its file and change it here. The change will be adapted in the feature model that imports the model. Feature IDE already includes a few examples where one can open and edit a model in UVL. For more information that goes beyond the presentation in this video, you can take a look at the links referenced in the description of the video. There, you can find more details about the design of the language and the acceptance in the community. Thanks for listening.